Welcome back, dear listeners. If you recall, the last time we spun ourselves a tale, Nyx came to the shop with a problem. His people in Sanctuary were growing in numbers and injuries. He called in his chip with me to have a chinwag with Garrick, the leader of the 8th Street Shifter Pack in Saskatoon. It didn't go all kittens and ferrets, more like a blood-crazed pile of shifters that didn't really look like they had much of the wheel. Garrick didn't have a whole lot of love for Nyx, and vice versa. Before things got even uglier, Nyx dropped us out of a portal through the void and onto the siren's front door. Or what was left of it. Turns out, Garrick called a war party on the sirens. Kiara's missing, Fiona is... reportedly gone, and Queen Grand's holding me accountable. She ain't that far off, but I'm gonna get even. Nick suggested we search for Garrick's previous hound, a lucha wrestler named Freya. I tried piecing the law together on that one. We trail behind Freya as she leads us through the bustling back halls of the arena. The other wrestlers pause to stare at us, but one glance from Freya and they turn to mind their business. She's clearly the pack leader here. We reach her sanctuary at last, her changing room. With a graceful flourish, she removes her mask collapsing into a worn beanbag chair. Freya, we need to talk. No, you need to leave. Garrick and I have an understanding. I stay on my side of the city, and he stays on his. That conversation has been done since you banished yourself from the pack, and I'm still not interested in being part of your sanctuary. You brought that offer to me once before, and I turned you down. Things have changed, Freya. The situation has escalated. Garrick will not be satisfied until the entire city is his. Then my luchas will throw down with his hordes when they come knocking. No sooner. He's taking shifters without consent into his pack and somehow subduing their human side. They're dangerous, Freya. How long will it be until Garrick gets bored and hunts a human or two? The Freya I know would have died long before giving a bloody inch to that monster, let alone abandoning innocence to suffer his cruelty. You think you know me? I am a warrior, and I refuse to leave my city. Garrick promised me if I turned tail the luchas, my loved ones would pay. So I stay here. I will protect them, and I will not leave. Before things get even more tense, I gotta ask... The wrestling thing? What? You're interrupting for that? Humor me. Hiding in plain sight. Man in garish red duster with tattoo magic from a goddess thought to be dead. Thanks for the reminder to get Zero to take down that wiki, but my garish wardrobe choices are not relevant and I refuse to be sidetracked by the fact that a luchador thinks my outfit is over the top. Now, you're still holding something back. What is it? Nix, your street magician needs to watch his mouth. I value his counsel. He's also had to make hard choices time and time again, often at great personal expense. Despite his origins and rough edges, he deserves a voice. And you, little sparkling... Me? Wait, what? Yes, you. Sparkling. (sighs) Nyx changed his connection to the Void to suit himself. You, on the other hand, had your connection ripped away. Do you feel this street magician deserves a voice in our court? Actually, yeah, I do. He's got a lot of guts for a human. More than you, anyway. Say that again. You smell like a coward. And I don't need my ferret body to tell me that. I am not a coward. Put Reza down. Now. Didn't you come to me for aid? What will you do if you end my story here and now? Improvise. I'm rather good at it. If you don't put my friend down right now, I'll make my peace with the scraps of plan B. Fine. I apologize. 
I do not like that word. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Freya, Valentine is here to help stop Garrick. He may be an edge we didn't have previously. What? He's willing to try and break an ancient shifter totem? Then challenge Garrick in combat? As much as I'd love to square off against Garrick, I'd rather make sure the shifters had a real leader. I'll make you a deal. You tell me about Garrick's little magical squeaky toy that's got everyone in that bar singing his song, and I'll make sure you get a title shot at the king. Sans said squeaky toy. The artifact is known as a rage stone. Garrick acquired it through treachery and blood. It holds the ability to command the animal soul of a shifter without the human aspect to balance it. No way. I didn't think the stone was real. I didn't think the stone was real either. Mainly because this is the first time I'm hearing of it. So, what's this stone thing about? The Rage Stones? They were deemed best left forgotten, buried beneath layers of history. In the ancient stories, shifters were beings of unbridled fury. Governed by a despot who mastered the art of channeling their rage, the hordes were nigh unstoppable. Eventually, the emergence of void shifters such as myself helped calm the rage created by the tyrant. Yeah, it's a bedtime story for shifters. A cautionary tale. Don't be a bad shifter or the rage stone will steal your humanity away. Without the human to control the beast, it's leashed to our primal half. Garrick twisted this to his own will. Break that, it means the pack's free. Right? I can only hope. It's a relic from an age long past. Countless alphas carried these into battle for centuries to become a primal force of nature and fury. What can you do against pure rage? Rage is a blunt instrument. I'm more like a. Uh... A stick? Like a little pokey stick that's drunk. What does that even mean? No, I'm like a thing that gets in past your defenses and pokes you. Any more banter and I'll show you how effective rage can be. Fine. I'll cheat to start. Tell you what, you, Nix, and Razor wait outside the bar for me to neutralize Garrick's little bauble. Then you come in, challenge him, and mop the floor with that overgrown mongrel. Nix, does he stand a chance against Garrick and his rage stone? A more talented and cunning magician I have yet to meet. <laughs> oh, Nix, you do care. Then I accept. Now tell me of your plan. First, we gotta hope a particular siren queen doesn't mind me raiding her booze. Valentine, now? Trust me, there's something there we can use to give me a shot against Garrick. What do you have planned? I'm gonna make myself a drink. Then I'm gonna save the bar. Returning to the Odeon and Granwell was not exactly on my to-do list. Yet, any magical reservoir and a storm and all that. While Nyx, Reza and Freya helped keep her highness from doing something to me I'd likely regret, I was working in a back room with a selection of booze that normally would be reserved for much better times. Alright, just a little more siren rum, then a dash of orange mandrake. Ah! Oh, come on now, it's not that bad! I thought mandrake screams were deadly. Ah! Nah, it's just a story. Ah, it was from back in the day when stubbing your toe was a death sentence. Mandrake screams won't kill you. I'll just give you terrible diarrhea. What? 
but only <coughs> if you hear it three times. Oh well. Side note, if we survive this adventure, I am going to kill you. That's fair. Can we hurry this up? Grand's a little upset you took her top shelf from. If I wanted to take the top shelf, I'd grab the last Saskatchewan Pirate Special. This is a unique rum. Didn't take you for a connoisseur. I'm not, but this one was being served at their wedding. Wait, you mean Fiona and Kira's? Yeah. It was one of those perfect moments in time. A little bit of those feelings soak into the world around them. Those who enjoy the moment. Those celebrating that love. Little keepsakes from them. There used to be a school of magic that derived power from the spirits in those moments. The rum, right? Not ghosts? Got it in one. I'm blending something that can hopefully short out Garrick's rage stone. So you're going to use love to beat rage? Yeah, not exactly my best plan, but at least I get to avail myself of Grand's booze in the process. And that flask will help you do what, exactly? Best case scenario, it's going to dampen the effects of the stone on anyone who's taken a swig. Worst case, I'm going to at least be drunk when Garrett breaks me apart. When are we leaving? Reza, you're staying out with Nix and Freya. And I say screw that. Someone needs to be watching your back so you've got a better shot at taking that stone apart. You don't need to do this alone. The sirens, Reza. What happened to them? That's on me. I've got to make up for that. No. That mess is entirely at Garrick's feet. You say you want to head back to the Queen City to get black in every shifter who's been itching for some combat to roll on 8th Street? Cool. I'll go hotwire something so we can get moving. You want to challenge the leader without flat shifters? I'm the next best thing. I'm not leaving Gran and Nyx to deal with that monster on their own if this goes pear-shaped. Then it's time for some pirate-style negotiations. I've got some witch-killing slugs just aching for some senseless violence. I unload both barrels into that chunk of glass, and it's in for a bad time. You don't need to do this. Screw you very much. You don't need to go in there on some stupid suicide mission because the sirens got hurt by a psychopath. Seriously, this handicap you're trying to punish yourself with is an idiotic move. You're a force for good, Valentine, and if I have to beat that into you to get it through your thick skull before we go save the world, so be it. Reza. I'm not done, Drunky Pan. You take on so much and you don't even realize there's a bunch of people who are willing to ride or die with you. So tough luck. You choose to take me along or I go out and I tell Nix your plan. Thanks, Reza. Ah! What the hells? Get off me, you... You weirdo! Tell anyone. I let you hug me, and I'll tell Fred Ripper where you stash your murder buzz. We're family. Don't ever forget that. Okay, then. I'll be fast. You'll be furious. Do you... Do you think that Fast and Furious are the names of the people in the movie? Uh... You don't need to be literal when you have family? I am going to tell everyone about this. Outside Garrick's bar, I feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand up at attention. The hungry eyes of the shifters under the relic's sway follow us like beasties waiting for their next dinner. Valentine, are you sure about this? Nope. But unless a more talented magician comes along with a better plan, it's our only shot. Now watch in awe as I do something incredibly stupid. Reza? I'm with you. I wish I had more insight to bestow upon you two before this battle. Just know you have my respect. Well, on that cheery note, let's go see a despot about magic rock. Oi! Rover! 
I'm here to talk with your boss. You're that street magician that came in here with the exile. What makes you think I'm gonna allow you in? My charming, winsome smile? My witty personality? Pick one. Or maybe you're a fan of interesting tattoos. I feel the rush as Anne's magic pours into me, my inked wings surging to life. It seems a new talent of Anne's that my tattoos almost sense the electricity in the air and react accordingly. Anne's new magic rushes through me, the wing tattoos unfurling as the ink manifests its power at a mere thought. With each beat of my heart, I can feel the elemental forces of fire and lightning swirling around me, drawn to my side like old friends. Anne's fury manifested. Her art serves as a potent reminder that she's a force all unto her own. Beside me, Reza draws her shotgun and loads two shells into the barrel, each one adorned with a strip of tape bearing the declaration Witch Killer. Gone is the sarcastic punk, replaced by a warrior's resolve. In that moment, a stark reminder that even if she can't turn into a giant nightmare ferret, she's still a real creature Garrett should pay attention to. You know what? I'm not paid enough for this. I'm so not paid enough. See, I knew we could reach an arrangement. Thanks, mate. I suggest maybe getting gone for the evening. We step into the dimly lit bar, every corner still feeling suffocatingly close. The press of shifters making me feel even more boxed in. Yet, in a booth near the back of the bar, I can feel Garrick's eyes on me. But there's something different this time. A shift in the air that sets my senses on edge. A rage stone's power attempts to sink its claws into me, trying to call me to the same song that's got the rest of these shifters in his way. As the trinket tries its fangs on me, I respond with something darker. Definitely not willing to bow to a shifter with a bit of borrowed power. It pushes back against the intruder, forcing it to redirect its focus to Reza, hoping maybe it'll find something easier to claim. The potion brewed from Fi and Kara's wedding booze seems to be doing the job. Garrick, I've come to bargain. Oh, come on, really? Bargain? For what? The law of nature is the strong take what they want. Oh, come on, Garrick. We can come to an agreement. How about one belly rub a week with walkies? You dare to mock me? It's not hard, mate. You're the poodle at the parade. Top beastie of the heap. Bravo. You chased the weaker magic times back to the shadow. And why shouldn't I? So you know how many shifters believe the strong rule and the weak serve. I'm strong, so I deserve my rule. You are a two-bit thug who found a scrap of magic about as terrifying as a teacup poodle in a pit bull fight. Quit! With the pit analogies! Oh, what's the matter, Fluffy? Hot under the collar? Oh, so you colored! <laughs> Pay attention to me, you big dumb brute. Hey, Furball. <laughs> Forget about me? I will rip you apart! Didn't you ever learn about street magicians? We're the worst to turn your back on. A mistake I will not make again. Reza, flask! No more talking. No more games. What's the gun left, little street magician? Nothing at all, mate. Except... Oops. Clumsy me. T. T. No! What are you doing? Sirens run. Think of it as something to soften up your hold on these shifters. This is from me. No! You don't know what you're doing! 
I understand perfectly. You turned pack members into slaves. You attacked my friends. And this is from Fiona and Kira. There's a terrible explosion as the rage stone shatters into hundreds of little fragments. Garrick is blown clean off me. My duster's shield spell protected me from the worst of it. I see Reza using her scarf to create a magical shield to do the same. We can't really do much here, except try to weather the blowback from destroying Garrick's stone. You... You... CHILD! Better a child than part of your pack. Okay, who turned on the sun? You're telling me. How do I lose the talent to see in the dark, but light still hurts all the same? Valentine, the stone's enchantment is broken. Give it to me and I'll send it into the void. Uh, just give me a broom, I'll sweep up the pieces. You broke the stone? Technically, I shot it. Right in the stone. I vouch for you too. Now we must face off against something even worse. Worse? What's worse than a pack of feral shifters and a petty tyrant? I'm free. <laughs> I'm free. They will pay for this. No! You let them... You let them loose! It's... It's the first Alpha. The original tyrant. The first and last tyrant. Look at you. Poor fools. <laughs> yeah, mate, you can stop the laughter any time now. It's creepy. Insolence. Aha! You already know my middle name. Finn Valentine. And you are... I'm not interested in conversations with meat. Bollocks. Guess that answers if you were put into the rock on purpose or by accident. Reese, are you good? Yeah, bloody, but still got some fight left. It looks like my servant has gathered for me a mighty army. Now, my children, we shall feast. Sorry, mate. The buffet's closed. Ah! You have been listening to The Graveyard Tapes, 8th Street Reckoning, Part 2. Written by Dustin Gray. Edited by Aiden Morgan and Angela Dumalog. Produced by Brianna Jean. Featuring Chase Hunter as Valentine. Caitlin Sinnott as Reza. Angela Dumalog as Freya. Brian Herdlow as Garrick. Rue Dickey as Nyx, Rick the Whitebird as the Bouncer, and Devin Bars as the First Alpha.